looked at uh, in lots of companies. We're going to focus today on some of the retailers that have it. Uh, before we get to individual names, is the exposure so sizable that it could be material to these companies' earnings if they have to pay more to service their debt? Yeah, uh, thanks, Tyler. Uh, good to talk to you again. So, you know, look, I, it's a question that's on investors' minds. I mean, we've we've done a ton of phone calls over the past couple of weeks where this is very top of mind. Um, it's not because, look, at the end of the day, we know for consumer discretionary, the fundamentals are challenged. Numbers are coming down. I think numbers are down about 35, 40 percent year to date. But then the question becomes, look, if this is going to continue through holiday, we've already got companies guiding down Q4 into next year, how bad does this really get? And when you start looking at balance sheet risk, that's really where, where that leverage gets a little bit scary. So, you know, floating rate debt, you know, maybe two, 3% headwind to the group overall, but some names more exposed than others. So, and I know we'll probably go through this in a second, but it's not just the floating rate debt, it's debt maturities, you know, who has debt coming, uh, yes. coming due in 12 to 18 months. There's a lot of other things that yeah. uh, uh, play here. I would think that it isn't just those that have floating rate or revolving credit lines or whatever, but it, if anybody who has debt coming due and needs to refinance that debt, it's now not going to be at whatever it was. It's going to be at, at X plus. So let's look at a couple of the companies that you say have a, a, a more risky position in that, in, in, the, floating, in the floating rate uh, area, Haynes Brands and VF Corp, clothing manufacturers. Yeah, so both, uh, not surprisingly, two uh, businesses are, that are pretty fundamentally challenged right now. They're having a tough time. Uh, VF, you know, um, you mentioned with the floating rate debt, they also have uh, about a billion dollars of debt coming due next year. Uh, I think they're paying less than a percent on that debt right now. So that's going to be a refi. That's going to be uh, dilutive, uh, I, I assume, when, when the time comes. And then HBI, you know, we have an underweight on it. So it's floating rate debt. It's, they've got a billion and a half of debt due in the next 12 to 18 months that they'll have to refinance. They're, they've also got some financial covenants that if things get really bad, they're going to start to come up again. So that's an issue. So you're right. Those are the two that we highlight um, in the report as being the most at risk right now. Okay. So I know what to steer clear of based on your analysis. What's in a good position given the current uh, environment, whether it's from an interest rate standpoint, a consumer standpoint, or something else? Look, we, we, we've become much more optimistic on the off-price sector uh, over the past month uh, month or so. Um, Burlington, we've named one of our top ideas. We upgraded Ross stores a couple weeks ago. Um, the idea of uh, the economy remaining weak and trade down accelerating into next year, defensible names that are cheap relative to their history, where we do see some kind of visibility into uh, fundamental um, um, outperformance next year. I think the off pricers are a good are, are a good place to look, and we would prefer Ross and Burlington over TJ, just simply because TJ TJ's had a good year. TJ was the one to own you want TJ was the off pricer to own in 2022. I think Burlington and Ross are the ones you want to own in 2023. Okay, Ike Porchow, thanks for joining us.